Before I begin this video, it's important that you understand my background a bit to fully appreciate what this game means to me. I grew up broke-ass poor in the mountains of Central Virginia. I lived in what would have been considered the project housing of my small town of 40,000 or so. And when I say poor, I don't mean the usual YouTube poor that is followed with comments like my mom or dad had a home PC I could play games on in the 1980s. When I say poor, I mean government WIC programs, food stamps, crime-ridden neighborhoods, and now and laters being the peak of my buying power. My father was incarcerated for a good portion of my younger years, leaving just me and my mother to fend for ourselves. My mother was a fighter though and she worked a couple of shitty jobs while she was going to night school during this time. Her aim was to pull our family out of the shithole we were in with a business degree and new job that allowed us to do more than just survive. ESWAT fits into this narrative by being the surprise early Christmas gift of 1990, a celebratory purchase that let me know my mother's hard work had finally paid off and we were moving on up in the world. ESWAT is often not fondly remembered by many as being one of the great games on the Genesis. I think this is mainly because of the way the game is designed, starting you out as a normal police officer with a very simple weapon. You start out on the first stage jumping on rooftops and dispatching enemies that don't do much fighting back. Your pea shooter needs multiple shots on some of these guys to get rid of them, and it's pretty tame by Genesis action game standards. It does have a gorgeous cityscape backdrop for you to fight to, and the stage and boss music is pretty good. Mission completed. Stage 2 does nothing to help grip newcomers either. It has a bit of a maze aspect to it, which is slow and uneventful. You are in a futuristic prison that has been taken over by bad guys, and you must use a platform to find your way in. Once you are back on foot, you need to find your way through the prison and find the boss of the level. You can actually fall off the path needed to get out of the stage, and that will mean you will need to do it all over again. You are stuck with the pea shooter the entire time, and killing some of the larger enemies is woefully slow. An easy boss fight awaits you as well. Mission completed. Stage 3 is where the game finally gives you the ESWAT cyber suit and some real weapons. Perhaps the game's largest flaw is waiting until this deep in the game to give you anything interesting or of decent variety. I know many people that never played past the first two stages because they thought that's all the game was. You even gain the ability of limited flight here indicated by the burner meter in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Set on Three Mile Island against a nuclear power plant, the enemies of this stage are laid out fairly simple. This area is basically designed to give you all the weapon power-ups in the entire game. Once you have these powerful additions, you'll quickly cut through the enemy's defenses and slaughter the boss. 
Just keep your super shot on him as soon as he shows up. completed. Stage 4 gets really interesting, with our hero raiding the hideout of a mad scientist working for the bad guys. This area is filled with all kinds of creatures and robots that differ quite a bit from what you've already seen. There's also an intelligent oil-like substance that is constantly trying to attack you spread all over the level. The music this stage is set against is brilliant, and I really dig the dark environment and changes to the enemies. The end boss is the mad scientist who has created a giant mechanical death machine to rob you of your glory. This battle is one of the easiest in the game if done correctly. Use your burner to hover high to destroy the top weak point, your missiles to destroy the bottom weak point, and then simply use the plasma cannon to blast the middle. Job done. completed. Stage 5 offers up even more variety, relying on strategic use of your burner to navigate much of the area. There are green areas on the floor that replenish your burner so you can keep in the air longer, while red areas do damage to you. The entire stage is set up with this fundamental truth guiding you. Keep your burner full at all cost, it's your lifeline in many areas. You'll eventually make your way to a platform that replenishes your burner, and falling off that platform or running out of burner damages you from the long stretches of red areas. You'll meet many aerial enemies on this stage as well, meaning you'll need to use burner to move around and fight while staying close to the platform for refills. At the end of the run, the platform will supercharge your burner for infinite use, allowing you to fly anywhere at will. You'll need this for the coming boss battle, a giant mech that launches rockets all over the stage. Keep that super shot on his eye to get rid of him. completed. The sixth stage takes place in a sewer and is one of my favorites in the entire game. I love the effect of the sewer water here, and we get another change up in enemy variety. Rocket placements and other agents of evil will attack you when you step into the green trigger areas. Rockets tend to attack top layer first, so shoot high then low. The entire area is a straight walk and fight battleground. There's no exploration or deviation here. Just take your time and watch out for the goo that comes from the pipes. The boss of this area is a sort of mechanical snake that pops in and out of the water. Stay near the edges and watch his pattern. Use the burner for quick escapes and be sure you always have a weapon firing to destroy his many eyes.
Mission completed. Stage 7 is a base of the terrorist organization you've been fighting. It's the longest and most varied in the game, and has you fighting all sorts of different enemies and there are a number of boss encounters as well. There's also an exploration element here, with a few hidden areas with life replenishment. You'll also need some skill managing your burner, so be mindful of how much you have at all times. Beware that there are some insta-deaths in this stage no matter how much life you have, such as spikes dropping from the ceiling. The main boss of this area is a robot tank that also has a spider-like form. Stay against the wall to the right, conserve burner, and unload on his midsection. Do the same for the spider form and his ass is grass in no time. completed. Stage 8 is the last stage in the game, and we will finally meet the leader of the bad guys. First you have to fight your way through an elevator ride of doom, descending into the lair of the boss slowly, surrounded by gun and missile toting enemies that often have the first shot at you. I have found the best weapon here is the missile, as it flies in a downward arc that allows you to hit enemies before they have a chance to hurt you. This stage is not easy the first few times you try it out, and you'll need to take note of how and when the enemies appear so you can get your timing down. Try not to miss too many of the rocket guys, as they can continue to drop attacks on you even after they are off the screen. Now that we have made it to the final boss, it's revealed that the dude has a suit just like yours. He even has all the powers you do, including your weapons. He relies heavily on the plasma cannon for long range attacks, and they do some serious damage. Keep your distance from him and stay out of his line of sight. He is better to attack from below, so wait for him to fly around to the upper levels of the stage. As long as you keep your distance and attack smart, this fight is quite doable. The twist comes when you hit him for the last time and all his health is gone, because this bastard also has your final burner attack. You cannot avoid the damage that it puts on you, so if you only have a few hit points left, you'll die every single time. This final attack takes 6 of your hit points, so you'll need more life than that to survive it. Mission completed. Eswat City Under Siege. Man, what a hell of a ride in 1990. It was the beginning of a new chapter in my life, and there was no better way for my young self to celebrate that than with a great game. I'd learned to appreciate many things about this game over the many months I poured into it. The music is good, the graphics quite detailed, and I love the variety in weaponry and stages. I'd play it many times by restricting things from myself, such as only using one weapon the entire game, or simply using the pea shooter the entire way through. I enjoyed it so much I even bought the Japanese release of the game some years later, which I was surprised to find was actually harder than the Western release. This game is included on many of the Sega Classics releases that have come out over the years, so access to it is everywhere. 
It likely will not have the special meaning to you that it does to me, but you should find a worthwhile game all the same. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.